Hello and welcome to the Villa Park Podcast. It's me, Rich, and I'm back with Rich, believe it or not, for a match preview for Aston Villa against Newcastle. Premier League football is back. Before we get into all that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We have been stuck on about 3,295 subscribers for about a week now. Um, come on, help us get over 3,300. So make sure you like, subscribe, get your comments in, pre- match predictions, score predictions, all that jazz. So uh, yeah, get involved in the chat because um, it's a big, big game. Um, first of all, Rich, back on the pod. Uh, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you, mate. I'm good. I think it's my first appearance in 2024. Um, so it always feels like home. Always feels like home <laughs> going back and, and, and talking to you. I always want to, um, yeah, reminisce, but I appreciate that there's a lot to talk about today. So, new year for Aston Villa, new chance to to push up, solidify our position in that um, in the league. So, yeah, I'm 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 keen. I'm excited. I'm there tonight. I know you are as well. Um, yeah, it's just an interesting time at the moment. We've kind of been starved of Premier League football for a while, and we've we've been drip fed some competitive games over the last few weeks, but doesn't feel like we're really into the flow of the football year yet so hopefully this one will, will kickstart that for us yeah absolutely i mean it's kind of almost forgotten obviously we had middlesbrough in the fa cup uh yeah. obviously got through that one then we had a premier league game squeeze in there against everton that's almost forgotten because it was a nil nil draw yeah, yeah. Uh, uh then there was kind of a two-week break pretty much for us um a little bit of premier league football in that weekend but I can't even say I watched any of it that weekend for whatever reason. And then obviously, yeah, we had Chelsea nil-nil. And now it does really feel like, you know, football's back without being sort of cliched. But yeah, it does really feel that. And it's a difficult one because I still remember a number of years ago when um, there was the COVID gap. And that, that gap of football when Dean Smith was in charge really affected our momentum. And I worry that dependent on, I mean, look, it's one game tonight, right? And then there's, there's a long way of the season still to go. But I think it is a big game. Villa need to put their foot on the gas again. They need to start building that momentum. They need to be looking up the league rather than down the league. And there's a fair few clubs that are kind of snapping at our heels a little bit. Newcastle being one of them. Granted, their performances haven't been where they need to be over the last couple of months. But yeah, I, I look. every game is, is, is a big game. We want to get that run going at Villa Park again. It will be a test of our quality. There's um, there's a bit of revenge on the cards for the, the mm-hmm. pace they gave us back at St. James's Park at the start of the season. So it will be interesting to see um, what comes of this evening. Absolutely. Well, you, you, you say that about kind of, you know, before we get into the specifics of the team, just generally talking about kind of Villa, little bit kind of, I guess, not stop start that's the wrong phrase but i feel like we've really had to work hard for our points we've really had to work hard for um you know wins draws and the performances haven't quite been as free flowing as they were earlier this season newcastle on the other hand had a lot of injuries um kind of getting some of their players back um and you say about the snapping at our heels those clubs like the west hams the the man united's even newcastle chelsea even tottenham if we drop points here, do you think there's a risk of that kind of, I guess, that sort of tension setting into Villa and those teams then getting a real boost in terms of being able to catch us? It's an interesting point, actually, because it's a mental battle as well. So let's say we do drop points. I'm looking at the league now. You're still three points above Spurs. I, I and then West Ham are at 35. So West Ham are eight points away from us. But West Ham signed Calvin Phillips. There's a, you know, they're on a run. The, the early season um, errors that, that they seem to were making and the noise have disappeared. Now they're they're the form team. Brighton aren't too far away from United for all of their issues aren't too, um, too far behind West Ham either. And it becomes a mental thing then. It becomes a, we should have won that game or we should have got the draw. We sh- and you start looking at the negatives rather than the positives. I mean, look, we, you know, we obviously talk a lot on, on what's happened. Diaby's gone off the boil hugely. And you just think, well, that was the type of player that would get the ball and excite. Watkins, I think it's five or six consecutive games he hasn't scored in, in now. And you start thinking all it takes is a couple of players to be off the boil. 
you don't have much to bring on from the bench. Duran, there's always, you know, is he injured? Is he on, on, Is he leaving? Who, who knows? But if he goes, we've got two days to bring in a replacement. I don't think he, he will, unless something's already been agreed with it to replace him, because we just don't have the firepower off the bench. And it very much becomes a glass half empty rather than a glass half full scenario. And Villa fans, like most football fans, can be quite fickle. And if the wind's blowing in the right direction, then, the, you know, the sails start taking us down that path of it's going to be a rubbish season. That We had the opportunity. We missed the opportunity. Not been a huge amount of talk about, you know, incomings that are going to improve us this season. So, again, I wouldn't be surprised if there was one that got announced over the next couple of days, but I also wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't. And then, yeah, the conversation starts changing, doesn't it? Other teams start hitting a, a bit of form. Madison returns for Spurs, and all of a sudden we're looking to stay away from seventh rather than trying to climb to the top of the table. And gone are those conversations around, you know, when we were talking about being top for Christmas. The realist in me, though, says if we have a good run in Europe, we have a good cup run, and we still are able to finish in the, in the top seven this season. It's a it's a very very good season, yeah. but yeah. Um, if buts and maybe's, you know, in, in exactly, the- exactly, exactly. Well, I guess that's the kind of like you said, the glass half empty approach. The glass half full approach is we're playing Newcastle um, at home. Um, yeah. They don't travel well this season um, in general. They don't travel well to Villa Park. As we don't yeah. travel well to to uh, St James's Park, Six, 16, 16 league meetings they they've you know Villa Park they've not been able to beat us. Uh, September two thousand and thirteen, I've, I've got here was the last time they got. <laughs> but 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 it's Aston Villa. We're always the club that someone. We're always against. yeah, I know we're and always the one that yeah yeah. I'm I'm sure every other football club supporter course, says yeah, that about course. theirs, but yeah, um, but yeah, I mean it's it's there for us. You know, we, we'll talk about Newcastle a little bit. They've like I say, they've not had a good away record this season after being so uh, so good last season. I was on one of uh, I was on the Loaded Mag podcast on Sunday night, which uh, quite a lot of the, our channel viewers were watching as well. And you know they've they've had like you know certain circumstances that have meant they're in that situation, like lots of injuries. They've still got a lot of injuries at the moment, but also they've they've not played well in certain games. Like they've lost to Everton, they've lost to Luton. They've lost to Nottingham Forest. So, look, it's not it's not out of the ordinary to suggest that Villa at home in the form that they're in at home, the position that both teams are in in the league, you know, we should be really confident going into this game. Yeah, I, th- I think we absolutely should. What I've seen of Newcastle over, over the last couple of months, I watched their game against Sunderland in the Cup. They were clearly the, the better team, um, understandably so. And there was a lot of vim and vigor in the game. I think the fixture hadn't been played for for five years, so it was it was a, it was a professional performance by Newcastle. But players that they've relied on, specifically Trippier, were, has has been rubbish over the last couple of months, and has been at fault for a number of the goals in those games that you mentioned that, that led to Newcastle losing. Their defensive record isn't great. Um, they've conceded 32 goals, which is one shy of what they conceded for the whole of last season. Mm-hmm. So there's holes. You've then got um, Joe Linton. I think he may have played from what Eddie Howe said last week, his last game for Newcastle. Yeah. All of a sudden, they're at a glass half empty rather than half full. This this oil money that, that Newcastle fans thought were going to be flowing into the club. Well, there's there's, there's policies they need to adhere to. There's the scenarios, there's, you know, FFP that they've got to work with. And they, they're having to sell players to try and put themselves in a position where they can improve some of the areas that they need to improve. And, you know, Aston Villa, from you know what we've seen in the, in the press recently, are also not um, protected from those, those discussions. But it seems that there's a lot on the line for both clubs. There'll be a lot of Newcastle fans. As you know, being a Newcastle local, it's not it's not a quick drive around the corner to get to Villa Park. There'll be people taking days off work to get down for the late kickoff that we're we'll spending most of the day on a motorway on a coach. They'll expect something from their, their team. And Newcastle will need to react to the scenario they're in because they too will be talking about looking down rather than up if they, you know, if they, they lose a couple of more games. But you're right, they've lost to some teams that on paper they shouldn't have lost to. So will they have it in them? I don't know. Will they have 
if we can play as we know we can play at Villa Park, I, I think will be too much for them. But those performances that we look back on included individuals that we've already mentioned today playing the at the top of their game. So a DRB, Ollie Watkins scoring goals, and they're just not where we need them to be at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It is shaping up to be a really interesting, interesting encounter. Um, let's move on to Villa then. Um, obviously, Emery talked in his press conference around you know potential players uh, returning. There's there's a potential for uh, for Jacob Ramsey, uh, who's doubtful but could be in the squad, but we haven't got confirmation still that Luca Dean is is back available and um, particularly important. Pau Torres um, not available. So I mean, how do you think? You know, before kind of predicted lineup, I'll show you mine uh, lineup in a second. Who? How do you think that's going to affect us? With you know, Pau Torres has been is such an important player for us at, at the moment he is he is and you know the reason why we wanted to sign him was just the the control that he has with how he sets up moves how comfortable he's on the, on the ball i still worry a little bit that he doesn't have the speed that we might require um a center off playing a high line to have but he sets the tempo and if you look at the impact that has on on the team like Mings was, Torres is a leader, and I worry that defensively, I, I think we we can we can cover the, what he won't bring to the table with with you know whoever Emery picks, and we obviously will go through your predicted lineup and we'll look at the team that we had um, out against Chelsea. But he's Emery's guy, and that playing out the back, which we certainly like to do, goes through Torres a lot. That comfortability, that comfortableness, sorry, on the on the ball. I don't think if you look at the team we had out against Chelsea, I, I don't think, I think Konza has it, to be fair to him. But I worry that if we try and play that without the experience of Torres, the, the quality on, on the ball, then I think we might struggle. I don't think we'll struggle defensively, though. I think that <sighs> this Newcastle got a lot of speed going forward. They try and catch teams on, on the break. We've seen week in, week out that, that Villa can handle that. And... You know, if you look at some of the stats around the number of offsides we've won, that proves that uh, mm -hmm. by by quite a way. So I'm not too worried about him. It'd be good to see Ramsey. I know there's been some rumours kicking around about him from a transfer perspective, but um, I think defensively we'll, we'll be OK. We've had to deal with these injuries for, for, for a while. So I think we'll see Moreno, we'll see Cash um, doing the performances that they, they, they normally do. But yeah. I, I, I think he will be missed. I wouldn't be surprised if, well, I don't know. We'll, we'll look at your, your predicted lineup yeah, to see who yeah. we've got to replace those missing players. So this is who I've gone for. Um, so I'll give my explanation. Okay. You mentioned uh, Cash. Like, I, th the, 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 the only area that I think worries me for uh, Newcastle um, is Gordon and Isak. They're the only two players that really worry me. Um, and again, talking on... Um, on the loaded podcast on Sunday night, where I think we will have the the kind of upper hand is in midfield. Like they're looking at a midfield of Bruno, uh, Bruno Guimaraes, uh, Lewis Miley. Obviously, he's done really well, seventeen years old, yeah, yeah. and uh, and Sean Longstaff. So that so that that's their three in midfield. And without Joe Linton, who is is the thorn in Villa's side every time he plays against us, I'm really confident that we can kind of dominate that midfield. Um, where what worries me though is Longley against Isak because I think yeah. Isak is just so good he would worry any any defender but let alone sort of Longley uh, and then and then um, and then Anthony Gordon down that left hand side so what I've gone with concert right back just p purely on the basis of that with Anthony Gordon and also when Emery has played the even the games at home against kind of the quote unquote bigger teams. He's gone with like more conservative approach, and you know when we played Arsenal, when we played Man City, play concert right back. So that's why I've gone there. Obviously, it's got to be then Carlos and Longley. Hopefully, Longley has a good game against Isak. Maybe Carlos can kind of dominate that that battle. Moreno left back. Then obviously Kamara, Louise, McGinn, Yuri Tiedemans, and then I've gone with Bailey instead of Diaby because I think he's our most potent attacking weapon. 
and uh, believe you know we wouldn't have been saying that last season. And no. then uh, and then Ollie Watkins hopefully can kind of rediscover some of that form. And I do think John McGinn um, will be royally up for this game as well. Like I'm expecting a big performance from that guy tonight. I mean, listen, he's been producing big performances for the last however many months, and they will know that they got battered. You know, yeah. they, they, they'll know that they've got a, a point to prove. Um, do you think Newcastle will come for the draw? It's interesting because Eddie has got a decent record against against Villa. Uh, I know he, he lost last season. But even at Bournemouth, he's got a decent record, and he's always tended to play like a similar style. You know, like physicality, like lots of silly fouls, lots of niggly fouls against Villa, kind of frustrate our flow. Um, and you know, almost you remember that Bournemouth game where I think we'd just come up and it was like take a turn to foul, like in their midfield, and it was like two of them got booked, maybe, but they, yeah, they yeah, needed about yeah, five yeah. fouls to get booked, and then right, totally. yeah, so he does tend to do that kind of stuff with 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 Villa. Um, and then I see, I don't necessarily see them playing for the draw. But I do see them potentially kind of changing tactics, as other teams have done, of sitting back a little bit, yeah. knowing that we play a high line, knowing that they've got fast players up front, because yeah, yeah. Murphy will probably be on the right-hand side. And then knowing that if Bruno gets the ball on the edge of the box or inside their half, he gets it on the half yeah. turn, he can just play a long ball over the top and say, right, off you go, lads, and run for it. So I don't think it's going to be particularly great football from Newcastle. Um but I, I don't necessarily think they'll play for a draw, but I do think mm. they will play more defensive minded and try and kind of operate in that manner. Like just, you know, pretty agricultural, long ball over the top and try yeah, and hurt yeah, us yeah. that way. And, and I ask that because if you look at the table, we win tonight, there's 17 points between yeah, us. Yeah, 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 exactly. We, exactly. We, there's no way Newcastle are coming back and, and, and overtaking us you'd like to think in, in that scenario. And if we look at the start of the season, the teams that pundits would have put in the top four, Newcastle would have been on some people's lists. And yeah, the, I mean, I, I tip them to be like, when they, especially when they beat us 5-1, I thought, bloody hell, they, have, they are going to be title contenders because nobody's going to beat them at St. James's Park. And they, they kind of carried that on for a few weeks. So I was like, these are going to be amazing. But yeah, they just haven't haven't been able to maintain it. Yeah, I remember just before Christmas, actually, I was reading something and it was an interview with Alex Ferguson and he was talking about teams that have impressed him and he actually spoke about the Villa-Newcastle game and he said, like, mm -hmm. he's really impressed with how Aston Villa played. He said, you know, clearly the scoreline doesn't, doesn't highlight that, but Villa were really good and, and have, have gone on from, from, from that point. And sometimes, as we said, glass half full, glass half empty can, can affect how we feel about performances. I'm not going to try and defend how Aston Villa play, by the way. But it's interesting that after that game, everyone thinks Newcastle are, are the team. You get a couple of in injuries. You need luck. And I think Aston Villa have been lucky this season with, OK, Buendia and Mings, all right, fine. But they didn't get injured 10 games into the season when we were really in our flow playing with them. And I was talking to someone this morning, actually, about, um, about the league. And we were talking about the Calvin Phillips uh, transfer and I read an article earlier in the week that said it, sh it shouldn't have been allowed because now West Ham will play Liverpool with Calvin Phillips last game of the season or the, or the penultimate game of the season it's Man City versus West Ham well Calvin Phillips can't play in that game and by that point Calvin Phillips will be a really important player in West Ham's team and you look at some of the the, the, the challenges that Aston Villa have, have faced I think we've been really lucky with injuries again mm -hmm. part of when Diem and Mings injuries however they were not in full flow as you know our season wasn't flying because of their uh, involvement but then I worry that we've got that to come and when you look at the, the, the bench and who knows who's going to be on our, our bench tonight but I don't think there'll be more than two players that will be able to come off the bench tonight and change the game so I think Villa need to go at them early doors and I think they need mm -hmm. to set the, 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 the tempo they need to stretch the game and they need to you know look we don't analyse Newcastle day in, day out. The Villa staff will be doing that. So so clearly we know their weaknesses. And I think the, the lineup that you had, for the reasons that, that you, you've given, I can see why Konza would, would play there. I think, yeah, Isaac and Gordon have been great coming forward, running with the ball, finding the, the spaces. So Konza's height will, will help. He's fantastic on the ball. And actually, 
surprisingly, he's really good going forward from a right-back mm-hmm. position. Um, so I don't think you lose too much having him in over cash from a from what cash brings, but I think you, you gain a fair bit. Yeah, McGinn or Wanu putting a, a, a solid performance. Watkins, again, whether you look at it glass half empty, glass half full, should be getting a goal tonight because he's, he's, he's gone a, a while without it. And I think, yeah, Bailey he came on in, in the last game probably a little bit too late to impact the game. And I think, yeah, I, I think he's, he's he's got a start. Um, under the lights, you know, whether <laughs> we Martin, always say it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. pretty hard in Birmingham today. So um, I think it'll be a good turnout. The fans will be in, in good voice and a 17 point cushion uh, over Newcastle with all of the big chat about Newcastle at the start of the season will certainly be a nice way to uh, to start Wednesday tomorrow. Absolutely, absolutely. So we'll get predictions in a second before we do. Um, you guys get your predictions in the chat as well. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I mentioned before we're about five or six away from 3,300. We want to hit 4,000 subscribers. So you guys can help us do that. Like, subscribe and uh, comment below. So Rich, predictions. If you feel, I, I sense you're feeling quite uh, quite positive about tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna I'm you're gonna rain on a parade right now, I'm sure. Yeah, but, um, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but yeah, um, what's your score and scorers for tonight? I think it's two 0 I think it's McGinn and Watkins. Nice and simple. The, yeah, the, I, I, I guess the the um the heartbeat of the team there um producing the goods. So I like yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I, I think that we are too good to lose to a Newcastle team in the um going through the run that they're on. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's probably fair. I mean, I don't want to pl- throw any disrespect to Newcastle. They're a good side. No, yeah. They've been playing quite well at the moment, but you know, had had a Harvey Barnes been available, yeah. had a Callum Wilson been available, had as I've said Joe Linton who is yeah, you know, yeah, I would have him in my team in an absolute heartbeat. But you take those three players out, whether they start in or on the bench, and that's a big, a big, big loss. Almiron is has been ill, potentially back on the bench today. Um, so yeah, there's there's still issues with their squad that you know uh, um, would be you know ultimately first team players. So yeah, you you're absolutely right to be kind of quite bullish and quite confident, and I'm going to be the same. I said I said two one on the um, on the uh, loaded podcast but then that was when me i thought that uh wilson and, and barnes would, would probably be playing because they were okay. quite confident that they'd be fit um i'm gonna say three one now i think okay. i think we're gonna i think we're gonna get a, a few goals today so i think watkins will break break his uh kind of goal drought or mini goal drought i think bailey will score and i'm gonna say yuri tielemans to score as well so there we go there we go so nice look, one. Listen, let's hope we're both right there's a villa victory on the card yeah. It it, I, it has to be it has to be right. This is like my worst game of the season for a lot of reasons. So yeah, you, this you, has you, to well, be right. You're off you're off to, to France tomorrow. So I am. I am. Yeah. In, in hiding after the game. <laughs> they'll think I'm. Uh, they'll think I'm. Uh, oh, yeah. Exactly. I'm. <laughs> bleed. Yeah. 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 But no. Hopefully we get the win. Like you say, under the lights, great atmosphere. Villa fans, make sure you make it uh, loud and intimidating for those Geordies coming down. Um, Rich, thank you for jumping on. Uh, always oh, a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, guys, as I said before, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We're going to be back with instant match reactions, talking tactics, match preview for Sheffield United on the weekend. So don't miss out on the channel. And as always, remember, we'll follow the Villa. Yeah.